Aloha everybody, this is Dave Wallace coming to you from Wahewa, Hawaii and welcome to my Monday Talk Story Time. Today I have a question for you. Uh, what was the scariest thing you faced as a child growing up? Now, uh, your answers may vary. Uh, some of you may talk about a particular incident that uh, either uh, an accident or some kind of apparition appearing under your bed or in your closet, <laughs> okay? Um, however, when I was nine years old, there were three different events that scared the living daylights out of me, okay? And to put, uh, to put things into perspective, I was born in the year 1953. And 1953, before the eight years before that, the first two bombs were uh, atomic bombs were dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. And, uh, you know, I grew up as a kid. I could see those uh, pictures. And, uh, in fact, my dad had gotten a book uh, called The Encyclopedia of World War II. And as a kid, I used to flip through those things, uh, through those encyclopedias, and uh, I saw pictures of the devastation left by the bomb in Hiroshima okay, and Nagasaki. And it scared the living daylights out of me. And I asked the question, how many bombs uh, were dropped in these places to cause that much, that much destruction? And my dad said, just one. So the power of the nuclear weapon, it was evident by pictures. However, um, you don't realize the power of something until you, uh, you're a witness to it. And uh, when I was nine years old, there was a series of, of atomic uh, tests that was held late at night, uh, about 11 o'clock at night in the evening, on an atoll just southwest of Hawaii. The Hawaiians call it Kalama Atoll, but for uh, the rest of the world, we know this as Johnson Atoll. And near Johnson Atoll, there's Christmas Island also, um, these two islands were the site of, uh, was the site of at least <clears throat> 11, actually Johnson Island was a site of about 11 atomic uh, tests. And some of them we were not aware of, some of them we'd see uh, flashes in the night. But this one particular uh, test, it appears that uh, before this atmospheric test of this uh, large nuclear explosion that was supposed to occur on Johnson Island. Um, it was planned for, uh, I believe it was July 8th, uh, 1962, and the bomb was set to go off at 11. Somehow the press <laughs> got a hold of it and, um, you know, informed the people that this is what's gonna happen and they gave the time uh, when it was going to happen, 11 o'clock at night. And so uh, radio stations uh, on the day, uh, July uh, July 8th, uh, starting late in the evening, I remember my mom and dad uh, tuning in to the radio because we wanted to, you know, join and look and watch what was going on. So we're on the, we were on the island of Molokai, and Johnson Island, if we're... Uh, standing outside of our house, uh, we were supposed to look towards Mauna Loa, kind of like southwest. But instead of looking over Mauna Loa where the sun normally sets, uh, we were supposed to kind of like look off towards uh, Haleolono or Palau, which is more on the south uh, end of Mauna Loa. And that's where we had our sights fixated. Now for us on Molokai, um, <laughs> We stayed up late listening to the radio broadcasts and people were calling in and uh, apparently there were parties set up in Waikiki. Uh, a lot of people were in Waikiki and parks watching this event. So we were not alone. So uh, as 11 o'clock came out, it was dark outside, it was cold and the birds had gone to sleep a long time ago. And uh, so we we're out there freezing and cold and listening to the radio. And as it began counting down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 
five, four, three, two, one, and right at zero, we could hear static on our radio, just like zzz. And all of a sudden, in the dead of night, the sun rose again, this time slightly to the west. And this was a bright, big, big ball of light. And it was yellowish red and just spewed, uh, filled the air. And it looked like a brand new sun coming up and it lit the whole place. Now, some people uh, reported that uh, in Waikiki, which is closer to the blast than us, uh, the distance between Honolulu and Johnson Atoll is about 941 miles. So uh, <laughs> it's pretty far. But some of the people that were in Waikiki said they could feel the heat from this explosion. Now, me as a kid, I'm looking at this and I remember the pictures of um, you know Hiroshima and Nagasaki where the heat was so hot that it kind of like photographed people, images of people into solid concrete. And I looked at it and I was scared. Scared the living daylights out of me. In fact, I peed in my pants. I was, I was so scared. And my mom and dad and all of us was just looking at this and we looked at each other and I started calling. Tears started running down my eyes because I was so scared. So um, we talked about it and as a family, um, we talked about the impact of this and uh, you know what we needed to do. And um, that scared me, okay? That frightened me because um, of so much power in one bomb, okay? And um, you know, nothing really, after that and stuff, I realized, okay, this was something they testing I doubt if we're gonna um, be able to use this in warfare any you know, any time. Well, <laughs> a few months later, that proposition was put under test, and uh, in October, uh, <laughs> in a period of about 13 days in October, 1962, the test came. Uh, we came closest, uh, the closest nuclear war we ever came into. I uh, came into that known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. And again, I'm still nine years old, a few months away from watching this bomb, boom, one bomb, just filling the atmosphere with all of this light. And people again in Waikiki were getting sunburned. <laughs> uh, just imagine if one of these bombs were to come and hit. And so uh, with the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, for us, we were alerted of the crisis itself on the 22nd of October when President Kennedy um, got on the TV and announced uh, to the world, basically, of the crisis that was developing in Cuba. And my parents were pretty supportive of us during that time. We, we, as kids, we, we didn't know where Cuba was. So my mom and dad um, got a map of the world and I remember them hanging it up um, on our living room wall and we could see the United States was right in the middle and Cuba, Cuba was right there south of Florida and uh, they began taking out, um, I remember uh, threads and stuff and showing us, okay, here's Cuba if they want to take out uh, if the Russians want to take out uh, Washington, D.C., here's the line. And so they're stretching and look at, whoa, that's pretty close. <laughs> okay, if they wanted to take out all of these places and stuff, well, they could from Cuba. And then my, my attention, being curious and stuff, I switched. I said, well, let's take a look at Hawaii. And guess what? <laughs> Uh, Russia is right there above China and I'm looking at my mom and dad it says uh, wow the Russians can launch a uh, can launch a missile um, from uh, from someplace in the Soviet Union and uh, we're there's nothing to protect us here in Hawaii that was frightening 
So in a period of uh, 13 days and stuff, uh, for us was about a week or so, uh, we were all antsy, listening to the radio, watching the TV, and very anxious and uh, very nervous. And um, I started reading books, uh, civil defense books about um, was in a fallout shelters. And in schools, we were practicing uh, we were practicing um, the duck and cover where uh, an alarm would be sounded, uh, the bell would be ringing, and the teachers instruct us when, when we hear the bell uh, to dive under our, our desks or, and hide there. And, uh, you know, several of the comedians of the time were saying, oh, yeah, you know, uh, upon hearing the sound of the signal of the sirens, you take cover under your desk and hide there and upon seeing a bright flash you tuck your head between your legs and kiss your butt goodbye <laughs> so that, that, that was one of the jokes and stuff that was going around and uh, it's funny when people you know enter a stressful situation they make jokes about it but this is something that was going on uh, during that time period to kind of alleviate the stress and anyway uh, after going through these rounds of, um, you know, being very scared, not only at um, not only at school but also at home, I came home and I started looking around for uh, something that I could make a fallout shelter from. And we had some spare corrugated uh, roofing or tin roofing. Some people call it a tatang. Um, available uh, in the back of our house so I had built some uh, pens and so I brought I dragged it out and brought it down to um, our hill uh, to create our garage on uh, the previous tenants had to dig into a hill so there was a kind of like a steep drop and I looked at that and I says well if I build a fallout shelter there just in case a bomb from the Russians come and explode in Honolulu and we need a safe place to go, um, you know, I'll, our family will be safe. So I, I dragged down the tin roof. And when my dad saw, <laughs> when my dad saw me doing, doing that, he come like, uh, he's a fireman. Yeah? And he looked at me and says, oh, well, boy, what you doing? He says, well, I'm trying to make a fallout shelter. And he looked at me and he says, you need help? Uh, yeah. So we made him a small <laughs> little shelter and in his mind and stuff he probably was saying, oh, you know, this boy is losing it. But for me it was like a way to feel safe. Yeah. And so my dad helped me uh, build and <laughs> looking back uh, I, I use only two pieces of the tin roofing and um, I think um, I was building it mainly for only me and one other person. <laughs> uh, we couldn't fit everybody inside. But after I built it, then we put up the lean to uh, it brought me comfort and felt that I was safe. So my dad did, did a really good job in understanding where I was coming from. And so I felt a little bit safe. And uh, after the Cuban Missile Crisis was uh, was done, uh, there was a deep sigh of relief and said, wow, the Russian is not going to bomb us. And so eventually we did, you know, take it back and I used it to build my pigeon coop. <laughs> the final and most um, devastating event that happened uh, happened in November 22nd. Uh, 1963. I remember that day like it happened yesterday. We were in school and uh, right around uh, early morning recess um, there was an announcement that our president, this man who stood up to the Russians in the Cuban Missile Crisis had been assassinated, shot in Dallas, Dallas Texas. And it broke my heart and it absolutely broke my heart um, talk about an entire school um, feeling sad we were crying 
and um, I remember all of the kids and the teachers were just devastated. And uh, for us going through those three series of events, seeing, witnessing the atomic bomb being uh, detonated, and as far as away, 900 miles away, we could clearly see it and uh, feel its effects. We had Cuban Missile Crisis and stuff where, you know, we had a our enemy trying to establish uh, bases so that, that they could wipe us off the map. And now you had the death or the killing of our president who stood up to this. And so it was a very, very scary time. And um, I had just 10, turned 10 years old. So um, these three events really impacted my life and uh, trying to understand um, a lot of times why I, um, if I act cautious, uh, it's just uh, this idea of uh, trying to be safe, okay? But these are things that, uh, events that happened and uh, I, it, it was, um, the final event that actually caught me uh, as that affected me just as much was 9-11 and waking up to the site of um, the two the Twin Towers being attacked by planes. So during this lifetime there's a lot of things that were um, frightening and uh, very scary okay and I uh, just wanted to share these things with you and right now, because right now, all of us, everybody in the world is facing a crisis too, of their own, okay? Uh, a unique kind, and this one is uh, the COVID, okay? COVID-19, which is keep on mutating, and it's going to be, look like it's going to be with us uh, for a while. These are frightening times, can be frightening times, uh, especially with... Um, you know, the amount of um, information or disinformation or misinformation um, being carried around and spread that's uh, causing unsurety and, um, you know, people are afraid. And uh, the thing about being afraid is that uh, you exercise caution in the things that you do. And um, instead of responding out of fear, you respond um, after thinking, you know, using good judgment, okay? So anyway, uh, in this time, I hope that uh, everybody is okay and uh, deal. we can deal with this uh, COVID pandemic uh, in ways that we can cope better, okay? Anyway, um, <laughs> this is my Monday uh, talk story time and I'll be posting my um, Powerball, uh, my Powerball feedback later on this evening, okay? So until then, this is Dave Wallace uh, from Waiho, Hawaii, saying aloha.